So it turns out that oxytocin interacts uh, in a larger brain circuit I call the home circuit. Home stands for, in English, human oxytocin-mediated empathy circuit. So when oxytocin is released within about a second of a positive social stimulus, it causes a cascade of activity in the brain. Um, I'm not going to go through all the neuroanatomy with you, but in short, it causes the release of two other signaling chemicals. One is called dopamine, and one is called serotonin. So dopamine is sometimes called a reward chemical. It's really understood better as a reinforcement chemical. So I do something nice for this gentleman here. He smiles, he's happy. My brain releases oxytocin and a little bit of dopamine. And it reminds me, oh, apparently the humans like it when you're nice to them. Please continue doing this, right? That's what it means to be a social creature. You're nice to me, I'm nice to you, and we're all happy, right? So you can think of oxytocin as being the biological foundation for the golden rule, right? Which every culture on the planet has. You're nice to me, I'll be nice to you most of the time. And we'll get to most of the time in just a minute. So besides dopamine, this little reminder, yeah, keep doing this, it releases serotonin as well. And serotonin, as you know, is associated with things like positive mood. So I get a little reminder, keep doing the social behaviors that keeps you embedded with the other human beings. And there's this little bit of relaxation. My mood's a little better, I'm a little bit calmer. So one way oxytocin signals that people are safe to be around is by giving this little change in our balance between stress and calmness. So it makes us a little bit calmer. So when I see my friend, I release oxytocin, I get this little reminder chemical, and my heart rate falls a little bit, and my breathing falls a little bit. So one way to think about oxytocin is this molecule that evolved in mammals to be responsible for that hallmark of mammals, which is live birth and the care of offspring. In human beings, the system developed much more strongly than any other mammal. And so when we release oxytocin, we begin to treat strangers like family. And we do that because we have many more oxytocin receptors in the front of the brain compared to any other mammal. So we're kind of hypersensitive to oxytocin, which means we're hypersensitive to people around us. Right? That's what it means to be a social creature. Right? We really get obsessed with the people around us, what they're doing, what they're thinking, what their intentions are, what their emotions are. We focus on people's faces. And all this gives us this rich set of information about how you're feeling. It lets us feel empathy. And when we feel empathy, I treat you like family, and I'm unlikely to hurt my family member. So that's the, really the foundation of oxytocin behaviorally. Okay, so where does this system go wrong? So we've investigated a number of factors that can inhibit the release of oxytocin. And one of those you are already aware of, high levels of stress. Right? So I know occasionally, like Antonio, that you flip out. You yell at someone as someone that you love, your colleague at work, your spouse, because you're having a bad day. And then what do you have to do the next day? You've got to go into work or go home and go, gosh, I was such a jerk yesterday. I am so sorry. I had a car accident. My dog died, whatever. I hadn't slept for three nights. And we understand that. We understand that if you yell at me once in a while, you're not a bad person. You're having a bad day, right? Your normal mechanisms that allow you to be nice to other people were inhibited. And that's oxytocin. So the other potent oxytocin inhibitor that we found is the most important chemical to half the people in this audience, testosterone. So it turns out that high levels of testosterone inhibit the release of oxytocin. So in experiments in which we've given testosterone to men and compared their behavior to men on placebo, we find that high testosterone males are more selfish and more entitled. That is, they offer less money to people around them and they demand more from others. So who are the most entitled, least empathic people on the planet? Teenage boys, which half of us used to be, we can tell you that. Okay, so I wouldn't expect a 15-year-old boy to be worried about Ben and his father or to cry when he watches Million Dollar Baby. But nature's really beautiful. It turns out that when you're in a committed relationship as a man, your testosterone falls. When you have children, your testosterone falls. 
as you age, your testosterone falls. Now, I don't have evidence for this other than my own experience, but if you have girl children like I do and you pick out little dresses every day, you become a girly man and your testosterone goes to zero. <laughs>